meeting of werewolves. Episode 12, Chiropractic Special. Hello, and welcome to Care and Feeding of Werewolves, a podcast addressing issues and current events in the paranormal community. I'm your host, Hazel Thornton. Today's listener writes, Dear Dr. Hazel, I think I'm falling for a dryad that lives on my family's property. There's a gorgeous old lodgepole pine that I love to sit under and just think about things because it's real peaceful. I've done it since I was a little girl, practically spent my summers under it. I moved away when I was still young, but came back when I inherited. Just recently, when I went out there, I caught glimpses of her fading into that tree. That's how I know she's a dryad, you see. I guess what I want to know is, how do I approach her? Should I approach her? Would she even consider a human, much less a woman? Heck, I live in a log cabin. What if that's like living in a house of mummified corpses would be to to a human? I don't know, Dr. Hazel. I feel like I've known her and loved her forever, but I've barely even seen her. Oh, girl, I don't know how to say this. But she is approaching you. I guarantee that she already knows about your log cabin and doesn't mind. Likely your house's logs were either farmed or culled. Either way, nature goddesses understand the role of death in life. I doubt she'd even ask you to go vegan. The being a woman thing is a non-issue. Most dryads are pretty tight with Artemis, if you catch my drift. As for your next step, leave some honey cake or a bit of hard cider under the tree. Dryads love that stuff. Offer her gifts, and she'll stay a little longer each time. Let her make all the first moves, or you'll never see her again. Remember, she's part of the wild. Her trust must be earned, and it won't be earned easily. As for the rest, you do know her. That feeling of peace under that tree, that safety and contentment, that's been her all along, looking out for young creatures in her clearing. Now that you're grown, she's probably curious about this fearless woman that loves her tree so much. And there's nothing a dryad loves more than having her wood admired. Thank you, Julia. Anyway, today we have a special guest joining us by phone who's the foremost chiropractic expert in North America on humanoid ungulates and acrohumanoids. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Brian Gray. Hey, thanks for having me on, Hazel. I've been really happy to see your show. I think it fills a much-needed space. Thank you. Dr. Gray. Please, call me Brian. Brian, you're a human chiropractor specializing in humanoid ungulates like centaurs, minotaurs, and fawns. It's pretty rare that someone without a magical background comes over to the dark side. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what got you into the field? I have an unfortunate tendency to ramble, so I'll try and keep this as succinct as I can. Um, It really comes down to a visit I had while I was an intern uh, in the campus health center at my chiropractic school. A patient was complaining about low back pain, and while I was doing my examination, what my hands were feeling and what my eyes were seeing were not matching up. Later on, that particular patient, who is now a, a very good friend of mine, admitted he had no idea what chiropractors do, um, 
and he thought I was just going to hug him and pop his back or something. So, <laughs> yeah, he, he was in a lot of pain and was kind of desperate, so was willing to try almost anything. <clears throat> right, um, succinct. I, I was doing the examination and checked his legs and felt fur. He panicked when he realized his cover was blown and headbutted me and fled the room. Oh. I received an oh, no. absolutely profound concussion, and it's where I got this impressive scar on my forehead. Ooh, ouch. Those horns hurt. Damn right they do. Uh, can I say damn? Hell yeah. I imagine that must have been quite the shock for both of you, even without the traumatic brain injury. Yeah, for sure. I, I tracked him down after a while, and we talked. Um, once he figured out that I wasn't going to out him, he started directing a lot of his friends to me. Were your patients hesitant about seeing someone who didn't have extensive experience with their anatomy? We can be a little mistrustful of humans. A, a little at first, but people's needs tend to overcome that. And once I proved I'd listen and work with them, then it really wasn't much of an issue. Our offices don't look very standard, right? I mean, I run a clinic out of an old Victorian house. It doesn't exactly scream clinical setting. Why don't you describe your office for us and how you adapted it for your unique patients? Well, I, I've gone through a couple of office spaces. At one point, I was renting a small barn outside of town and would meet with patients that had a more difficult time navigating normal-sized offices there, particularly the centaurs, minotaurs, ogres, and on one very memorable occasion, a giant. Now I have a converted farmhouse with a custom outbuilding for our larger patients. Um, I think I might be the only chiropractor in the country with facilities to do traction on a centaur. That is impressive, especially when, as a student, you immediately saw a need and adapted your education on your own to suit that goal. And you did it without following a set path. You had to trailblaze it all on your own. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be asking Dr. Brian Gray about what he's learned as the preeminent chiropractor specializing in humanoid ungulates and acrohumanoids. Oh, my neck! My back is so stiff. My branches snap off. All my snakes are suffocating. What do we do? Dust thine horns interfere with sleep's sweet embrace? Doth the shapes growing from thine head drive away sweet dreams on a midsummer night's eve? Tis certain, Sirrah, that I may have suffered thine fate, as my own horned visage doth show. Certain it also was, Sirrah, that I was not content to suffer my fate silently, nor the fate of vassals such as yourselves. And so did I toil through many sleepless night, tossing and turning, testing and learning, until... One blessed morn that I awoke rested with nary a twinge or tremor. As king, my blessing shall trickle down to you, my vassals, with mine own invention, thy pillow. Thy pillow is stuffed with a secret material and blend of charms that allow it to stretch and accommodate any spikes, tusks, snakes, horns, yea, even antlers, whilst cradling thine head more comfortably than the lap of any maiden fair. My neck feels amazing. My back? Is it stiff? 
Wow! Not even a bent twig. All of my snakes survived. It's a miracle. Lo, hast thou ever heard such golden refuse? Order two thy pillows and get a third for half off. Only four easy payments of just twenty four ninety nine. My fair folk, show your allegiance to your king, and order thy pillow today. Shipping and handling fees may apply. Thy pillow is not responsible for any injuries occurring during use. Thy pillow is not intended to diagnose, treat, or educate about virtually anything. Thy pillow is for outdoor use only. Thy pillow is not meant to be used for sleeping. All profits go to Oberon for King PAC. Welcome back to Care and Feeding of Werewolves. We've been talking with Dr. Brian Gray about his practice as a chiropractor for minotaurs, centaurs, fawns, ogres, and other beings with specific musculoskeletal needs. Dr. Gray, sorry, Brian, what would you say is the most common issue you tend to treat people for? Oh, low back pain by far. Neck pain is a close second. Um... Some of our paranormal patients have have to sleep in some really inventive positions. Truthfully, if I was more of an entrepreneurial type, I would work on a line of pillows and mattresses for paranormals. Now there's an idea for our creative listeners out there. If there was one resource that you could have that would make your job easier, what would it be? Now, that's an excellent question. Um, an extra four arms and the strength of an ogre? <laughs> <laughs> extra limbs aren't as helpful as you would think. Don't ask me how I know this. I'll try not to. Um, how about detailed anatomical charts and good physiology texts? Uh, I know you're aware of how lacking the information is. It makes it a lot more difficult to develop effective treatments. So much of what I do is trial and error. That's one of the deviations from standard practices that I appreciate the most, actually. The level of two-way communication that's required. I find that assuming the patient's mistaken or lying, as I was taught that the patient cannot be objective, only destroys trust and honesty. And let's be real here. We're people ourselves and therefore can't be objective. Anyone who thinks otherwise is just fooling themselves. True. One last question. If there was any piece of advice you'd give to our listeners, what would it be? Oh, uh, don't lift and twist. Uh, regardless of species, that seems to be the story that starts most of our visits. Vertebrae are poorly designed for that coupled motion. Lift and then mm. pivot if at all possible. Thank you for that piece of wisdom. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me on, Hazel. It was a pleasure to be on the show. I feel like a daytime talk show host after that. And don't forget to let me know if any of your patients start going missing, too. Oh, I definitely will do that. Um, so what do you think about swapping mead for potions? I make a mean rotomel. Mm. Ooh, I like that idea. You might just be my new best friend. Don't tell Julia. Hey, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Today's episode was written and performed by Brenna Anderson Dowd and Eric Gurul, DC. Thy Pillow was written and performed by Frederick Elmore. Sound design by Frederick Elmore. Music production by Kevin Elmore. Find us on Facebook at Care and Feeding of Werewolves. Tweet us at Care Werewolves or email us at feedingwerewolves at gmail.com. Please rate and review. 
Care and Feeding of Werewolves is a podcast distributed by Kerfuffle and Chaos Productions and licensed under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution share-alike 4.0 International. All content on the Care and Feeding of Werewolves podcast is fictional and for entertainment purposes only. Content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your doctor or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of an episode. Reliance on any information provided by Care and Feeding of Werewolves, Kerfuffle and Chaos Productions, or anyone involved with the production of this podcast is solely at your own risk. And remember, no matter your alignment, adjusting it in public is rude. <laughs>